That should work. Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm Phil Rowley. And I'm Brian Chan. Today we're coming to you from beautiful Nanaimo, British Columbia, located on the east side of Vancouver Island. As you can see, it's spectacular weather. And we're going to teach you today all about urban fly fishing. Lots of lakes are stocked throughout the country in major population centers to provide fishing opportunities. Nanaimo provides some great opportunities. We're looking for a great show to catch some trout and other species. Stay tuned. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to City of Nanaimo, Freshwater Fishery Society of BC, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions. On today's show, the new Fly Fisher visits the vibrant scenic city of Nanaimo, British Columbia. We'll be sampling some of the urban fly fishing opportunities within the city limits. Nanaimo has a population of just over 78,000 and is located on the east coast of Vancouver Island. Easily accessible by car, ferry or plane, Nanaimo offers numerous accommodation options offering a full range of amenities. Nanaimo also offers a variety of activities including museums, restaurants, shopping, First Nations crafts and galleries, hiking, and of course, delicious Nanaimo bars. Nanaimo is also becoming a popular port for cruise ships traveling the west coast. We recommend you call or visit a Tourism Nanaimo Visitor Information Center regarding the numerous attractions and activities within the Nanaimo area. Joining us today is local fly fishing expert, Gord McDonald. Gord has intimate knowledge of the urban fly fishing opportunities within the Nanaimo area and his knowledge and experience will be invaluable. When, when you come here, the five to seven weight fly rod would cover most things uh, for the lakes and the rivers. And I would also recommend bringing floating sink tip and full sinking lines and a variety of leeches, chronomids and uh, nymph patterns and that should cover everything. We even have dry fly action in the summer as well too. And further, further to the lake fishing, we also have a few rivers here with cutthroat trout in them. And then in the fall, there's a run of pink salmon that come into the Millstone River that uh, was part of a sea pen hatchery program. So that gives us a nice opportunity to catch salmon right from shore, right in town. Fishing season runs all year long because we have such a mild climate here. Uh, peak times tend to be within the spring and fall seasons. Fish on. Fish on. It's a nice little fish. Just it'll work. We're anchored in uh, 13. 13, yeah. So I got the indicator. We got lots of structure around here. So um, let's grab the net and 
the indicator popped. So these indicators are excellent for working in and around structure because we can suspend the fly. There's lots of deadfall up here. And of course, lots of food organisms live amongst the deadfall. So you've got to go into nasty places to get them. Nice little rainbow. And we're just fishing a, a balanced leech, a leech that's been tied to hang horizontally. So, whoa, perfect, Brian. Well done. <laughs> See that? I'll just wet my hands. It's important when you're releasing fish to wet your hands. You have a protective slime on them. And nothing huge, but a uh, little bit of a belly on it. Chunky. Chunky little catchable. Again, just a sample of some of the beautiful little fish you can get in these urban fisheries. It's hard to believe we're five minutes from downtown Nanaimo. Beautiful. Off he goes. So what we have here is a horizontal or a balanced leech. And actually, this is how the fly fishes upside down. It's on a small jig hook, number 10. Just a crystal chenille body with a brown marabou tail. Color combinations with this are endless. Even an all white one makes a good little minnow pattern. And this fly is designed by putting a little household pin with a tungsten bead on the front to compensate for the mass of the bend of the hook so it hangs horizontally. Very natural profile. And under an indicator in and around these sunken logs and debris, effective method to uh, put your fly into nasty places with uh, no risk of a hang up. So we're going to put that back in the lake, see if we can take another little rainbow. So Phil, we found a nice little spot on the lake here, on a big shoal. Uh, first of all, we found the lake using a map book, a fishing map book, and then inside the map book, individual lakes are listed. This particular area, our lake is listed. We looked at the contour maps, found a shoal, used our depth sounder to marry that information. And so these are valuable uh, tools to help you get located and tell you how, what to use and where to fish. And they're available in magazine format, book format, as well as online. You can go to the Freshwater Fish Society of BC website and download information like this for lots of lakes in the province. Yeah, and not only lakes in, in beautiful British Columbia where we are today, but all across North America. Government agencies, as Brian said, the internet, great sources to find information on the lakes you're gonna target and help you learn them just that much quicker. Valuable tool and anytime you go lake fishing you should consider uh, having a, an underwater contour or bathymetric map of some type. So we're taking the brown sparkle leech off. It, it has been working, but Brian's having success uh, with an English pattern called the booby, which is uh, foam eyeballs. So I'm going to give that a whirl as well. I'm going to try one of these with the uh, chartreuse and uh, black coloration, or maybe even an all black. Let's try that. And we're just going to move these through the water. It's kind of an attractor presentation. With the marabou tail and the uh, foam eyeballs, this fly wiggles and dances through the water. It can be a very effective way of shaking slumber trout into biting. So what are you doing, Brian? Well, we've been having a hard time getting the fish to bite, so we put on the old reliable booby. It's a good searching pattern, right? Yes. It'll tell you whether the fish are really dour. Actually, this one's not a bad size for no, we might be able to for the uh, lake. Well, yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> but it'll 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 get even the most dour fish to bite, and mm -hmm. that's what we want to do. Yeah, between the marabou and the foam eyeballs, the fly has a unique wobbling action that fish just can't resist. It's an excellent way to, as you say. Take we, uh, quiet fish and turn them into biting fish. That's right. Strip them in fast, keep them moving. Yeah, because they have short, we, we fish them on short shank hooks. If you fish a booby slow uh, or even static, it's dangerous because the fish can take them quite deeply. There's something about those foam eyeballs they seem to like. So keep the, keep the, short, the hook shanks short and the pace up, and it can be a very effective method. This is a nice little, uh, nice little rainbow or cutthroat, Brian. I can't quite tell. Um, I don't know that sun's so bright now. It, no, it's a it's a nice rainbow. So we'll uh, 
I'll get the uh, booby out, take it off, and show show the viewers what they look like in okay. case you're not familiar with them, and then we'll let this guy go. A little olive uh, booby that we've been using. What color? And you've got a black one, all black, black. one on. Then Short shank, them. but it's the big foam eyes, and when you're fishing with type four to type seven lines, and you're you're pulling them down, and then they float back up, and you're pulling them down. It just it just gets the aggressive nature in fish to strike out. It's probably something invading their territory, yeah. and they want to get rid of it. So well, they're just predators that just yeah. Feel so they the need do work. Hurt that. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, a good looking fish. It's gonna grow. There's yeah. Well, it's it's pretty unique. We've got the sound of the highway behind us. We can even hear the calls of the service department. <laughs> uh, you don't have to travel far to get into some exciting fishing. One of the challenges when you carry a lot of leaders with you in your kit bag or on your vest is how do you keep them organized and together. A simple method is to go to your local stationery store and pick up one of these openable binder rings. Simply place the leader on or your leaders on the ring, close them up, they're all secure, flip around till you get the leader that you want, open up the ring, remove the leader, put it onto your line and then if it's more than one bag you can simply put it back on or even for the waist, clip it up, and everything's together. It's a simple, neat system for keeping your leaders organized and together. On today's show, we are using five and six weight rods, indicator taper floating lines, and a variety of sinking lines. When using strike indicators to suspend coronamid pupa or balanced leeches, we use five weight rods and leaders between 15 and 18 feet long. We also placed a small number 12 barrel swivel approximately 18 inches above the fly. For fishing boobies we used fast action six weight rods and fast sinking density compensated lines of type 4 density or greater. Our leaders were short between 3 and 5 feet. Short leaders can be easily constructed using two sections of fluorocarbon tippet. Clear intermediate lines with 9-foot leaders worked well when casting and retrieving flies. The Freshwater Fisheries Society of British Columbia is a not-for-profit society that works in partnership with the provincial government to deliver the province's freshwater stocking program. New Fly Fisher co-host Brian Chan talks with society staff member Verna Cameron as a local Nanaimo lake is stocked. So I'm with Verna Cameron, a fish culturalist with the Vancouver Island Trout Hatchery from the Freshwater Fish Society of BC. Thanks for coming on the show, Verna. Good morning, Brian. Just had a couple questions for you about the Vancouver Island Trout Hatchery, like how many lakes a year do you stock out of the hatchery? Yeah. And how many of those lakes you'd stock with catchables? Okay, so we do about a uh, hundred lakes on the island yep. and they go all the way from uh, Port Hardy out to Port Alberni and down to the Souk area. Uh, we do about 31 of those lakes with the catchables and so at the hatchery we raise about 300,000 fish and out of that production would be 145,000 catchables. So these are catchable rainbow trout that we just stocked here. That's right. Yeah. And so why is this, why is the society so heavily involved with with catchable trout in in, in, a, in a lot of urban lakes as well? Well, uh, I guess the main thing would be that if we didn't have a stocking program, the um, fishing ability in our local lakes would be de depleted, and we wouldn't have the anglers out there enjoying the fresh, out, busy outdoors. That's great. That's right. So these, I've seen we've partnered with the city of Nanaimo mm -hmm. on an um, urban stocking program, fishing in the city campaign. It's just to get more people fishing. That's right. Uh, so what we've done there, we have local lakes such as uh, Diver, 
Long, Green, Westwood, Brandon, and Colliery Lakes, which uh, a lot of them actually have great accessibility uh, for fishing. And uh, with our stocking programs, that makes the uh, fishing ability even better. So here at Colliery, you're going to have a lot of kids coming out, and they're going to learn the art of fishing, and that's going to get them out into the outdoors and improve uh, their, their, their lifestyle instead of getting them away from the video games. That's right. <laughs> well, that's great. We really appreciate, as anglers, the opportunity to fish these lakes at the side of the stock. I think I'm going to go fishing. Okay, awesome. <laughs> The nice thing about urban lake fishing is you really don't need a complicated fly box. Brian and I are going to walk you through some simple patterns that you might want to think about bringing along your next urban fly fishing trip. So we can start off uh, right here with a simple uh, pheasant tail mayfly nymph, very common, buy it yep. in any fly tackle store, yep. tackle store. Then an old reliable black and red uh, ice cream cone chronomid pupa, which chronomids are everywhere. Yeah, that's an excellent you know, pattern. Were. This is a definite go-to fly for uh, productive trout lakes, uh, halfback. Old pattern, very reliable, still should be in everybody's box. Yeah, it represents an awful lot of different food items. Exactly, big or small, a lot of different things. Yeah. Then we can get a little flashier with with uh, just a leech pattern with marabou tail, so a lot of action in the mm -hmm. water, a little bit of uh, crystal flash in the tail, just a bit more of an attractive yeah. pattern. And then we can finish off with a, a booby, uh, uh, a UK pattern yeah. from, from the British. Uh, definitely an attractor, aggressive, type of uh, bite that you get from them, but it, it's a searching pattern tells you if the fish are active or not. So there you go, a simple cross section from an imitative approach all the way down to something more of the attractor variety when they don't seem to want to eat the more imitative flies. Today, one of our most productive patterns was the balanced sparkle leech. This pattern's unique construction allows it to suspend in a horizontal manner under an indicator. This tying style can be adapted to suggest other food sources such as damsel nymphs and bait fish. Balance flies also work well when cast and retrieved without indicators. So Brian, we both like to use swivels. <laughs> swivels are a great, great little tool, actually. Uh, we used to use them just to add weight, to get your fly down quicker uh, when we're fishing with one fly, because British Columbia, we, we fish with one, one fly, you can't use droppers. No. So a swivel, you know, 16 to 20 inches above your fly, adds the weight to get you down. It, when you're casting with swivels and with an indicator, you want to make sure you see the two props, the mm -hmm. swivel, and then the fly. Fish will actually bite the swivel when they're on chronomids. <laughs> so the rule of thumb is if you, you get two or three strikes in a row and you miss the fish, uh, you know that they didn't bite your fly and you probably want to be, they bit the swivel and you probably want to be trying to match that color of the chronomid as close to the swivel pattern. So like black swivels, gray swivels, silver swivels, yep. even gold swivels. So it's kind of like an what's well, like a second indicator yep. right there. Yeah, it is. Holy smokes. And they're eating lots of them. Little green guys. I'll probably get them on you. So it probably explains perhaps why our green leeches are working so well, because we're just, they get tuned into the color as well. So anything green works, but you can see these are alive and wiggling. You see the silvery glow. 
Very small, uh, 816s, 18s, big calabatus in there, a couple of them. Oh, yeah, it's well, nice fish. Not bad. I'll bring them around. Oh. Tie yep. them on the other side, Phil. Okay. Oh, he's going around. Oh, that's, that's a nice a little fish. One. Great way to end the day. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. It's been a great day. You know, we started out having to fish the tractors. We saw some chronomids come off. We got a few on chronomids. And, uh, but the leeches have been pretty good today. Yeah, it's uh, always a good bread and butter staple. And there's that one right top dead center, right in the upper part of the snout. Get that out of the way. Fish them out of the net a little bit. Lots and lots of fun. There you go. Whoops. <laughs> Doesn't want to go. There's a beautiful urban lake fish. Can't yeah, beat it. Lots of fun. Well, Brian, that was a fun and rewarding day, wasn't it? We had a great time. Fished four different lakes, all within 15, 20 minutes of each other, all within fishing in the city, fishing programs, stocked with catchable trout. It's great for beginners or experienced anglers. It just proves once again, you don't have to travel far to get excellent fly fishing. Often, it's right in your own backyard. Exactly. So for more information on this episode and others in this series, please visit us at thenewflyfisher.com. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to City of Nanaimo, Freshwater Fishery Society of BC, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions.